I think if there's one thing that I wish, well, both <laughs> of us had known before becoming parents was that it gets easier after the first three weeks. The first three weeks is the most challenging in terms of getting up every two to three hours in the middle of the night, throughout the day, and it's obviously a massive learning curve if you've never been a parent before in your life and having to learn so much so quickly, it can be quite overwhelming. But then after those three weeks, you start to get into a bit of a rhythm and yeah. actually gets easier. It gets easier. The one thing that keeps you up at night with parenting is, is our son. I mean, <laughs> are you kidding me? Sometimes, he's, he's pretty good right now. He is not pretty good right now. Well, You're right a heavy now. He sleeper, so I'm getting up like every 20 minutes because he has six teeth coming in at once which means he wants me to know about it about every 20 minutes so I can go in there and say, yes, you have six teeth coming in. It's gonna be all right. Give him a little cuddle, he goes back to sleep. Just as I'm falling asleep, back up. Remind but, me, I got six teeth, six but, teeth. But initially though, it was for me, like every time I woke up in the middle of the night when he was sleeping next to us in the first few weeks, was checking if he was breathing. But can we, can we, show, can we show people how you sleep when you have a son or a child? When you have a child, this is, you, you used to sleep like this, right? This is how you'd sleep. Once you have a child, you sleep like this. Yeah, no, it's just true. constantly awaiting, just waiting. Is something going to happen? I think there's lots of lessons that we'd pass on uh, to our son. I lost my dad in 2011. Lance lost his mum in 2014, and both of them taught us so many like lessons. And for example, my dad, he used to tell me to do one good turn a day and do something nice for someone else and put someone else in front of you at least once a day. And I think that's something that's a really valuable lesson to pass on to um, our son. I should do that. We should all do that. Yeah. Why haven't you taught me that? Well. I should do it. The, yeah. the thing, the thing that I, I, I most looked forward to and has actually been the most rewarding is starting to pass traditions on to your child. Like that, to me, those traditions are the connection between the past and the future. And that's where family becomes this eternal feeling thing. It's, it's, that's the most amazing part is it's watching true your son start to witness or participate in the things that your grandma taught your mom. Like Christmas amazing. cookies. Yeah. Every first thing that Robbie did, the first sneeze, the first poop, the first cough, the yeah. first laugh, the first smile, there's so many things that can just make your heart melt in a second. I remember I thought I was gonna be so terrified of poo. Like I was like, I can't, I'm not gonna be able to handle it, I'm gonna be that throwing up. That's what we talk about now. And then that first poo that came out like really well formed, oh, and God. I opened up the diaper and there it was. I literally was in tears. I was like, Tom, this, that's the most perfect poo I've ever seen. That's the perfect poo. Yeah, no, it's, it is kind of ridiculous. But like when I come home from training and I see our son smiling and so excited to see us, that's pretty inspiring. For people who have fertility issues and certainly gay men, two gay men have fertility issues, uh, there's several options, many options for uh, having a child and surrogacy was one of them. I'll just say for us it was most important that uh, our surrogate be safe and healthy and cared for, uh, that we felt it was safe place for us to do it and secure and that of course the child is going to be safe and secure. So for us it was most important to go through that process in a place with good strong law to protect the surrogates and the intended parents and the children. And so we went through a process in California, which currently has about the best law in the world to protect all three. And our surrogate is absolutely awesome. She's, you know, we, she enjoys lots of the photo updates of Robbie every single week and being able to have, you know, she's like one of our dear friends. Yeah, I think, I think one of the biggest misconceptions about going through the process of surrogacy is that this is somehow a stranger who's carrying your child and that's just absolutely not true this becomes your surrogate becomes one of your best friends and a member of your family uh, and not just during the process but forever for us in our family like if he misses sleep it's dangerous if i miss sleep i'm cloudy headed and i move a bit slower so i often during the week when he has training i get up a lot and then on the weekends i refuse i just stay horizontal and I until he wakes up and yeah. Our son's full name is Robert Ray Black Daly. Um, Robert was the name of my dad, and so we named our son after my dad, who we lost in 2011. And Ray is a family name of Lance's, because yeah. Lance is from the South, Texas. Yeah, um, so it doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl, your middle name's Ray. Josie Ray, James Ray, right? So he might be the first country star I know of with a British accent. Could be True. Pretty, could be pretty cool. It's true. Yeah. Robbie Ray.